No, the animator shown in this publicity reel is not J.R. Bray. And no, none of the techniques shown in this film are actual techniques of the J.R. Bray studio of the 19-teens. However, the wealth that they showed and the implication that he was a founding member of the animation industry were absolutely true. An uneasy mixture of truth and lies is a metaphor for the life of J.R. Bray. Talented, creative, powerful, all true. Cunning and cutthroat, also true. In life he would be very successful, but in death he is now known mostly as a crook. The bulk of Bray's negative image comes from his interactions with Windsor McKay during the early 19-teens. Impressed by Gertie the Dinosaur made by Windsor McKay, Bray contacted McKay and asked if he could interview him as part of a newspaper article. McKay was happy to show Bray all of his techniques, how he created the film, and how he was planning on making future films. Unfortunately, Unknown to McKay, Bray was lying. Bray actually had an animation studio of his own. J.R. Bray did in fact start in newspapers, but it was as a comics creator. He created a comic strip called The Teddy Bears, which was popular during the first decade of the 1900s. In 1907, there was a film adaptation by Edwin Porter called The Teddy Bears. The film was very successful and it so influenced J.R. Bray that he decided to start his own animation studio. After a failed experiment using stop motion animation, Bray decided to use traditional animation techniques in this film from 1913, The Artist's Dream. The artist dream is the end result of the false interview held with Windsor McKay. It is obvious that Gertie the Dinosaur deeply influenced this film. But it is also easy to see how Bray took the information he learned from Windsor McKay and improved the methods for completing an animated film in a faster period of time.
how much of Windsor McKay's techniques did J.R. Bray steal? This is very much up for debate. Windsor McKay certainly had a number of reasons to feel taken advantage of. J.R. Bray was clearly inspired by Gertie the Dinosaur, playing to the audience and showing expressive thought through motion on screen. It is not difficult to see that Bray was attempting to mimic Windsor McKay's style in his film, The Artist's Dream. But due to a unique story and a more sedate character, one cannot say that Bray stole directly from McKay in these areas. The chief area of concern was in Bray's patenting of zinc printed backgrounds. Bray was able to avoid redrawing each background frame by frame by printing a single background that included blank spaces that would allow for a character to move freely. Windsor McKay's method was to redraw the background in each frame, drastically slowing down production time creating the need for additional labor, and creating the previously referenced jittering effect on screen. Did J.R. Bray earn his reputation as a thief of Windsor McKay's animation techniques? Well, yes and no. There is no doubt that Bray interviewed Windsor McKay with devious intentions, and that Bray's first successful film was heavily influenced by McKay's style. It is also true that Bray got a quick lesson in character animation over static backgrounds when he interviewed McKay about Gertie the Dinosaur. However, Bray's film is original and unique to his own story ideas, having more in common with the latter Fleischer brothers out of the Inkwell cartoons. In addition, Bray's background techniques had very little to do with McKay and his technique, making it easy to see why Bray was able to earn a patent. It is ultimately unfair to call Bray an imitator of Windsor McKay, as there is much that is original in his work. History's other major accusation against Bray's character was his treatment of Earl Hurd and Hurd's most famous patent. In 1914, animator Earl Hurd filed for and received a patent for the technique of using celluloid to overlay animation. Hurd's patent essentially allowed animators to have a single background and gave the freedom of having characters moving freely in front of the static scenery. The benefit of Hurd's patent was that the animator was not restricted to placing movement in a pre-planned area that was held blank. Animators could now freely create movement without having to concern themselves with overlapping the background. Hurd's patent was a major improvement over J.R. Bray's technique of pre-planned blank sections in a background drawing. Unfortunately for Earl Hurd, he had not yet realized the economic impact of his patent. Upon an invitation from J.R. Bray, Hurd agreed to work for the J.R. Bray studio and became a partner. J.R. Bray effectively gained control over the patent and he reaped the financial benefits of vastly improved cartoons with a quicker production time. Animation historians note that J.R. Bray convinced her to join his studio by offering a joint venture that would allow for less legal entrapments based upon similarities between the background patents. It is unclear if Hurd fully understood that his patent was essentially being given to another business partner. It is completely clear, however, that J.R. Bray was able to financially benefit from his advantageous relationship with Hurd.
Bray was able to financially benefit from the work of the Fleischer brothers, Walt Disney, and countless others in the animation industry. Was J.R. Bray a leader in the early animation industry? Yes. Primary techniques of animation, such as character animation, staging, reduction of superfluous drawing, and ease of production were all either pioneered by Bray or refined under his supervision. Do current animators and film producers feel the influence of J.R. Bray even today? Absolutely. Software that creates ease of animation production on a computer is based upon the early patents and techniques of J.R. Bray. Was J.R. Bray a crook, essentially stealing the work and ideas of others? In many ways, yes, Bray is guilty. He used devious tactics to get access to new ideas and, in the case of Earl Hurd, new patents. However, he did improve upon the early animation techniques and in many cases use them more effectively to ease the production of animation. His films were innovative and commercial, standing on their own even if they were not completely original. His films are both fine examples of silent animation and ultimately examples of film that lacks artistic ambition. They look and move great for their era but they also have little to say about the people that created them. In the end, the films are a mixed bag of merits and demerits, much like J.R. Bray himself.